How have you been? I've been okay. <laughs> it's definitely been up and down for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But you guys um, aren't really in quarantine mode right now, are you? Yeah, yeah. Texas. Uh, the governor was like, everything's open. <laughs> uh, he's like, that is not happening here. They're like, uh, maybe late July, early August. So it's are people crazy. are are people just like pissed off? Yeah, like people are going to the beach, like protesting. I'm like, dude, you're gonna catch it. <laughs> get, get back in the house. Like, I don't know. I it's like just do what they tell us to do. I, I'm I'm not a, someone who's gonna like. I mean, it's it's the beach. It's not going anywhere. So right. Yeah. I yeah. I um. I was. It's like all of us have become risk managers to some extent with all of this mm-hmm. happening. And um, I don't know. You know, I have my quarantine. I know you have your quarantine. Yes, girl. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like you aren't seeing anybody. But it's like dating. Like you aren't seeing anybody else, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and we have our. My- I'm not trying to catch anything. I know. Totally. Like you good? Because I'm not seeing anybody else. Like you good? Like okay. I trust that you didn't see anybody during the week. <laughs> totally. I thought this was a monogamous relationship. <laughs> but the people, well, now we can't hang. Like, it's, it's totally like that. Um, oh, my gosh. That's funny. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Cool. Um, are you um, in L.A.? I am. It's, I'm actually, well... I should be back, but I was supposed to be in Japan the last two months. And so it's been awesome. Like, I honestly, I I cannot complain. Like, I have never had this amount of time in my home ever. Yeah. So I am. that like? Yeah, it's been amazing. Like, I have been able to actually read books. I have been able to cook meals, hang out at home, wake up. Lay on that unicorn. You hang out in the world. The freaking uni, my boyfriend popped it last week. Last weekend, I was low key like pissed. Yeah, but, that. You know, it's just a unicorn. We can get another one, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't they, they sell them at Target? Do they? I think so. I think I saw them. They probably but do. I might be wrong about it. That might be like a smaller version. You had the big version, right? It was, it's huge. Yeah. Like, it's huge. And it's, <laughs> that's my go-to like I literally like every day try to get my work done mm. and by like 12 1 o'clock I like try to go out there and lay on uni but she's pops yeah. so I'm like dude did he repli- not- did he replace it at least yeah he okay. ordered something, yeah, something else online but I, I don't know, whatever <laughs> you know I want the uni but it's all yeah good. it sounds like you're not really feeling it whatever else he ordered yeah yeah no I'm not I want the uni <laughs> No, I'm not. Like, I want the uni. Give me my uni. I know. Oh, man. How has this been going? Like, your chess show, you're, like, so official. You're, like, the Oprah of softball right now. Oh, my gosh. You're the second person who has said that. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. And then, um, what's that? No, I I don't think I'll make you cry. (laughs) Um... I was I was laughing too because um, the uh, one of the editors that edits the show, he's like, you have like one of those uh, ASMR voices. You totally do. <laughs> I was like, like those soothing and calm and yeah. I was like, maybe on the next episode, let's have like you know a faint thunderstorm in the background or maybe <laughs> like a crackling fire. I don't know. I think we're, I think we're onto something. I love it. I mm-hmm. think it's great. Yeah. I've been listening to them. Like, I love it. Really? And yeah. I've been listening to them. And, um, I, the last, I listened to Franz yesterday. Mm-hmm. Everybody talks about Megan. I'm like, I love it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Megan and I were just texting and she's like, dude, I'm liking the show. I'm like, cool. You know? Just doing something different. Just trying to have real conversations. That's, really what it comes down to I love it and that's mm-hmm. and it's so much better than you know like what was it like to win the gold medal like, yeah <laughs> I know right 
I yeah, know. like, you know, we, we're, we're people, I, you know, like we, <laughs> softball is obviously such a huge part of our lives and, but there's just a lot more to us, right? I mean, I right. think that's one of the things I'm learning too and like this post career life, like there are so many other things that I like enjoy and love and um, softball definitely took a lot, a huge part of that forever. Mm. But I don't know, like just trying to navigate and find different things. And so it's been nice to actually hear conversations of like how Francesca's uh, like balancing like having children and yeah. being a career woman and just all the other things, but all the things, but yeah. more above that, like, I think what's really neat, like, especially most of the people that you've been interviewing is that we all are still in the game in some way, in some sort. Although I'm like, there's so many other things that like I love and I'm passionate about, but mm -hmm. um, I just feel so lucky that I still get the chance to have these conversations and be connected to the game grateful super grateful yeah me too and every person's part is important too it's not yeah you know i think everyone kind of has uh those kind of existential questions after mm -hmm. you play softball it's like do i mean it, the the natural progression of things is to like go into coaching but mm -hmm. you and i and megan and Fran, mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't take that path, but mm -hmm. like Lappin and Caitlin mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a number of other coaches decided to, and that's okay. Yeah. Like it's all, right. it's right. all great. Right. I love it. And I think that's like one of the things too, I think like that's how I know that the sport, our game has grown and it's evolved. Like we don't have to go into coaching. Like there's so many different avenues and so many different ways um, to kind of be creative and like still stay in the game and um, still give value. I think that's what, one of the things that like when I retired, it was like, how can I give value? I know that I don't want to coach. I know that I want to impact. Like, how could I do that? Um, you know, and I, obviously I was super lucky, like Japan, um, uh, gave me a job right after um, playing, which so fortunate, like so loyal to them, but it's allowed me to still spread my wings and like still search and still impact and still give value and all those things. So I don't know. Um, but I think there's, I don't know. I think our sport's grown. Don't you think? Like we just have so many ways that we can like still. Uh, yeah. It's grown so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, could you, the, the amount of coverage, players now get compared to to when we played and um i'd like to talk about t the 2003 world series oh you want to go there, We're gonna, go there guys? <laughs> we'll go there okay. we'll go there <laughs> okay. Look, i'm i'm finally at a place i'm finally <laughs> at a place where <laughs> i don't feel so bitter or angry thinking about that world series oh I, man i feel it it only took me you know <laughs> over 10 years 20 years <laughs> <laughs> oh jazz man like, oh, gosh yeah but uh, we don't have to get we'll get into that eventually um before uh we got on this call i was actually watching uh your ted talk i really enjoyed it oh, um man. And I wanted to ask you like uh, a few things. Um, why did you decide to do that? Um, how did you prepare for it? And kind of after that experience, like what did it teach you? So much. I learned so much about myself. Um, there's so many reasons why I did it. I mean, the first reason, the obvious reason is just sharing my story. And it was a huge battle. Like I didn't know who I was after playing. Like I just completely like had a moment where I just lost myself. Like it's all we know. And it, I, less, I lost a piece of me, my identity. And like, I felt like I had to like literally mourn um, my whole softball career um, and, but realize that like that was a foundation that like it was something that can 
push me forward into the next thing and whatever it is that I do. And so being able to speak about that was liberating. It was freeing. Um, more than anything, I think another reason was is um, I'm quiet and shy and reserved and like never in a million years did I ever think that I would be able to be on the stage and like speak to that capacity and um, talk about the things that went on personal, <laughs> personally in my life and share it with strangers. Um, so that was just something that I was like, wow, like I, I, I did that. Um, the preparation for it, like that was probably like the thing I enjoyed the most about it. Um, just having to like write out all of these feelings and actually like my process after retiring and like thinking about the things that I did do. And like, that was kind of like this like therapeutic therapy just to kind of get it out. But the preparation of actually like rehearsing and speaking and all those things, like I had a coach coach me through it and she was amazing. Her name's Amory off-tailing. She's amazing. She's in San Diego. She's the one who actually connected me to the TED Talk. She is, was the director for the San Diego um, TED Talk. And so she um, said, are you up for this? I'm like, sure. And it's so funny. I'm like, yeah, TED Talk, I'll do it. Okay, great. And so then as I was preparing, I'm like, okay, this is great. Therapeutic. This is all good. And literally like one week prior <laughs> she gets on the zoom call with me and was like okay I'm gonna turn off my camera you turn off yours and you're gonna go through it and I like just I just I speak a lot so I just was like okay when I get there I'll be fine but she want I, I did I wasn't prepared from like top to bottom <laughs> and so I'm like just like kind of like okay 10 years ago like just not the full speech so she puts the yeah. camera on she's like I'm gonna be real with you I'm a little freaked out you are not ready. We are one week awake and you one week away and you should be ready. I was like, Oh, I learned something else about me. <laughs> like tough love, Jess. When someone's hard on me, like, so I, I didn't want to let, I didn't want to let this lady down. Like she just yeah. invested and trusted that I could perform and, and do all those great speech or whatnot. But, um, ended up, going down driving down for the rehearsal which was the day was a saturday i actually did this um, talk on the sunday and on saturday i'm driving down i still feel fine like i'm like not that nervous i do the rehearsal i i bombed the whole thing like i just i sucked like it was horrible <laughs> i like go back to my room like just like it was like frustration tears like okay dude like we got to pull this ish together we said that we're gonna do this and it's just amazing like I like to thrive under pressure Chess. yeah the lights turn on yeah. on Sunday and like I just was able to just get it out and honestly one of like the best moments um like since playing like it was challenging um and so like I'm like after that I'm like I want more of that and to be able to connect to non- athletes these were all business women who were pivoting in their careers um who you know had doubts and going through like imposter syndrome and all the things like just um but to be able to be able to connect with the whole broader audience like just open my eyes like wow like i can i could do this like this could be something else that i can go into and speak to others and share my story and um i don't know i think i just didn't think I could do it, but yeah. I did it. Yeah, I, it was awesome. awesome. I really enjoyed it. I thought your storytelling was really entertaining. There are several times when I just like laughed and I mean, I watch you and I'm like, it's Tosh, you know? <laughs> but in, um, but like watching it and just imagining myself if I had to do that, just, you know, you get the butterflies in your oh, tummy wow. and you're, just like I can feel my body temperature starting to rise, you know, because it's just like, it's so, um, uh, the, the pressure's on, but 100%. I mean, <laughs> 100% in like just everything, like the day before, like literally like, like and she, the coach, she's like, and she's just like total direct, like blunt, no BS. Like, yeah. I'm going to need you to slow down. You're speaking way too fast, honey. On Sunday, <laughs> and like, just like that. So I, 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 Amazing. I also learned like, I need that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> need that. 
don't BS with me. Just tell me straight and then yeah. I'll get it. I'll figure it out. You know, so. I Isn't it amazing? It. Like when you meet those people, it's like, I, I want that. I need yeah. that. I need, uh, <laughs> why don't yeah. I talk like that? Oh like, my gosh. <laughs> 100%. I'm like, okay. Like I need to be a little bit more of that. Like that boldness, just mm-hmm. direct, like no BS. Yeah. Yeah. That, right? um, we don't know anybody like that. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And I think that's why we, I know, right? Megan, like we, I just, we love Megan, but that's why we appreciate her. You yeah. Know? Like, I have so many Megan stories. We don't have to talk about our Megan stories. 100%. Well, can you just she, share one? Well, she's a person who was like, Tosh, I'm going to need you to be more assertive. Do you know what assertive <laughs> means? <laughs> and I was like, I think so. Let me Google it real quick. I think I know what it means, but like, like in this context, like, just make a decision. Like, when we're, when we're, when we're going to go to dinner, blur out where you want to go. It's okay if you, because I'm just like, I don't, honestly, I don't care. Like, yeah. we can go here, we can go there. Man, she's tough, right? But we <laughs> yeah, love her. Yeah, but I mean, Let's be real. She's not the best decision maker either when it comes to like what, where she wants to eat, what she wants to eat. She's probably literally like the last person to order most of the time. She's like, um, can you come back to me? Oh my gosh. So maybe that's why she's putting it on me. Like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love it. Um, So a little bit uh, into softball, even though I feel like we could probably talk this entire hour about (laughs) non-softball related. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) let's do it. I dare (laughs) you. You dare me. (laughs) I dare you. Yeah, the first one to talk about softball (laughs) loses. (laughs) You know, right? (laughs) I can do it. Oh man, I would probably get fired. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I said I dare you. <laughs> I dare you, Chad. I mean, I could, but that would have to be offline. Okay. Oh my gosh! Wow. Um, so I was uh, I was looking at some of the record books because you're like all over them. Did you know that in the UCLA record book, your name is listed 118 times? I did not know that, <laughs> <laughs> but now I do. <laughs> I was like, damn, 118. It's got to be repeats. <laughs> not repeats, like I repeated it in multiple years or something. Yeah, like yeah, no. Oh, 100%. Do you know uh, your longest hitting streak that you ever had? Mm, I know that it was my junior season. I just, yes, I don't know the number. I rem- Cause I, you know what? I remember who snapped the hitting streak. I just don't know how many it was though. How many games it was. Theo Bollinger, I hate her for that Ooh, reason. Really? I don't hate her like really, but mm-hmm. Tia Bollinger, she um, played at Washington. Yep. Killer change up. Huh? Yeah. And I probably was that it was, change up all damn day. I'm like, come on. Yeah. I have a, um, so my grandparents came uh, to a game at Judy Garman and we were playing against Washington and it was, I think it was like the only game they saw me play like live and I had a home run off of Tia Tia Bollinger. Oh, so you're trying to rub it in? (laughs) Yeah. I'm just saying. Good job. (laughs) It's still, I'm like, what is it, year 25? And I'm still pissed. Dude, oh, 32 games straight. And then the next one that you had was 29 games. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know the most hits you ever recorded in a season? I don't. I'm going to give you four options. Okay. Was it A, 103 hits? Was it B, 115 hits? Ooh. Was it C, 120 hits? Or was it D, 112 hits? I think it's A. It's D, 112 100. hits. 
112. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Tosh. <laughs> you know, uh, your career hits. <laughs> I do not. I don't. I don't. See, this is okay. For those of you listening, you know, <laughs> Tosh don't care about stats. Uh, She's no. just up trying to get hit. All I know is that we won in 2003, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we might as well just go there. Quick, <laughs> <laughs> quick insert. Uh, <laughs> Tosh had 395 hits in her career. All right. What happened to All those right. other five? You could have been a 400. Yeah, they could have had 400. <laughs> Dang it. Tia Bollinger and pissed. Yeah, <laughs> Tia. Right damn it. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it. Ugh. Okay. 2003. <sighs> Let me get some water. <laughs> Drink some water. Oh my gosh. Uh. Okay. Tosh is a uh, top three finalist for player of the year. I think at that time you were batting 500. Um, but again, you don't know numbers. <laughs> I don't know that part. I do remember the top three. Mm -hmm. And I remember Kat. Yeah. One. So you guys went into the loser's bracket. And, yes. and you had to beat us twice. Yes. And we had delays that game because it always rains there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys blanked us uh, three nothing the first game, and uh, the second game, it just we had the game, and then we decided to pitch to you, which was like the stupidest thing we could have done. I would girl, I I struck out every cat. Yeah, I would have. I I too. if I'm cat, I'm like dude. Did you see how she just whipped at my drop ball 10 times? I'm throwing it. But she didn't throw me her drop ball. I've always asked her, like, why did she throw me curveball? Yeah, I know. And then we did the same thing to Caitlin. To Kate, yeah. Yeah. She doesn't want to throw her drop ball anymore? I don't, yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I don't what know. Man. <laughs> I mean, good for you guys. I know. But that sucked. I know. Man. I know. <laughs> I, know. I remember when you came up and there, I just, you know, coach and cat had a conversation like they're going to fucking throw her. I'm like, wrong move, <laughs> wrong move. <laughs> In my mind, you know, at short. And I think Tell me your glove at short. Yeah, you, you hit it to me. I booted it. Um, <clears throat> no, you did it. I did it. No, I don't think, uh, no, no. I think it like took a hop and then like, it, no? Like, no, it bounced like a 10 times up the middle, but it's, I, you did, I don't, no, no, no. I don't mm -hmm. think you booted it. Okay. No. For some reason, that's how I remember that story. Oh no, <laughs> no, Chaz, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the whole win. <laughs> Run back the tapes. <laughs> okay, okay. We need the replay. Yeah, um, tapes, but. yeah. Well, either way, you got on. The rally started. Caitlin comes up. And I don't know why. We'd been throwing her drops inside, like, all day long. And she hadn't touched it. I think touched Kat it. only was throwing drop balls, like, the entire day. And just that the last inning, like, everybody got curveballs. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know? But I don't know. I like, just remember, gosh... Um, and I only share this like with this like few people just at short, just like in my mind, I'm like shaking my head like, no, don't throw that pitch. And then it like happens. Ah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then, you, those, your gut feelings are. Oh yeah. No, I had, I had several of those. Um, when we pitched to you, I was like, bad idea. And then when when we threw the the curve to Caitlin, I was like, why are we throwing that pitch? Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I can't do anything. I'm not calling yeah. pitches. And right. then 
<laughs> one of the biggest ones uh, was my senior year. And um, I tore my labrum in January of my senior year. So I had to sit out for a little bit in rehab. So I wasn't really throwing 100%. <clears throat> and uh, we were playing Arizona. And it was a first and third situation. And uh, Coach Clark told us, uh, you're going to let the ball go through. And I just remember just feeling so angry inside because if you know me, like first and thirds are my thing. Like I have, I have good peripherals mm -hmm. and I have good instincts on, you know, whether to fake or to cut. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm really good at getting out of those situations regardless of like the state of my arm, but I, I think coach was like trying to protect my arm, but at the, that point, like, dude, it's already torn. Like my labor has gone. <laughs> like, yeah, let, me, let me play. Let me compete. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and then we let it go. And uh, I mean, Kay, Caitlin said that the runner on third, like ran right on the throw. Uh -huh. She swears by it. But I think, I mean, you know, perception is reality. I just right. like, that's how I perceive that situation. That's the worst. That's the worst. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I feel you, man. Yeah. But how good did it feel to win in 2003? It felt pretty good. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. But it felt, I mean, yeah. in that year, <clears throat> we, it, we just had so many great players. Win tradition first class to not win a national championship like that was like all we literally heard um but I don't know I feel like out of my four years there the year prior like we were just stacked like there's no reason why we should have lost a game we had Stacey Newman, Courtney Dale, Amanda Free, Kira Garrell like how do you lose a game and we didn't even make it to the championship game and so to lose all of those players our senior season our senior season, like we just literally had role players and people who just like knew their role and just like all the elements of a championship team. I don't know. And so like, I wouldn't say like out of my four years, like that was the most talented team. I just think we were the best team um, in terms of um, like camaraderie and like just a good fit for everybody um, mm -hmm. to win that year. It just made everything that much better um just knowing like the adversity we had faced and um it was great I mean one of my favorite memories and mm -hmm. sorry you know but um you don't need to apologize <laughs> I, I'm just like making fun like, you know? I'm so sorry Jess like, <laughs> like 20 years ago <laughs> I know it, it, it's it's definitely something that stands out in my softball career for sure is mm -hmm. that senior season. So I'm right on. Yeah. Yeah. Have you and been, that um, what's up? No. And I was like, it just triggered, like, have you been watching the last dance, the Michael Jordan thing? I've watched the first two episodes. Um, it's great. Are you not feeling it? I don't know. I'm, I think I need to watch more of it. I think I'm, I haven't like binged it, um, but I haven't really been binging anything. Okay. I think because like I mean, most of my work is like on screen, so right. I try to like get off of it um, right. as much as I can um, when I'm not working. Uh, but I think it's really good. It. Please watch. It. I think sometimes the. I don't know if I if I, I like. I can't figure out if I like or dislike the jumping around in timeline. That part was hard to follow because you want it to be like linear. Um, yeah. And chronological. But yes, 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 yes. What do you like but about I, it? Well, I, there's so many things. I mean, I think just MJ, like he mm -hmm. was larger than life and he knew that he needed teams uh, teammates to succeed and like I just 
I like appreciated him. Like, I really think I appreciated his like internal motivation. Like almost he like literally made up stories about the other opponents, like to get him up for the game. Like right. this dude like annihilated, annihilated me last time. Like, Mm-hmm. I guess one of the athletes, I don't remember the guy's name, but after the game, he was, he was a rookie that season and like just had the best game of his life. And yeah. Like after the game, he's like, used to do that. He's like, good yeah. game MJ or good game Mike or something like yeah. that. So that like was like, Oh, you want to tell me like that? Like I felt like I related to him on that. Mm-hmm. Like, just, like, yeah. I don't know, this girl's talking about my mom or something. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah. You know, making up stories <clears throat> about opponents to get yourself up. Well, it's, um, you know, every person's going to have different kind of motivating factors and it's nice to see that like fully on display, um, because it's, it's like the game within the game, Mm -hmm. right? And some people can trash talk and some, some can't. That's right. like not their style. Like we all know the silent assassins, they just are going to go out and do their thing. Uh, but those, the other people who are just going to like, you know, stick it in there. Yeah. And totally. <clears throat> I remember uh, when I first joined uh, the cruisers and Lappin was on that team. Uh, she said that I, I, don't quote me on this, but from what I remember, she like did not like me at first because I would kind of trash talk and yeah. I'd laugh at people like in the middle of rundowns because I knew I was going to get out of them as a runner. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I did that all the way up through college. I love it. Um, because I thought it was like hilarious. Like, it's like, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. You know? <laughs> And um, I was used to that, though. That's what I did with my brothers. Mm-hmm. Like, and when I joined the softball team, it's it was probably a kind of a lower level than that. Um, because I mean, you know, she would she would tab herself with a serious award. So me being kind of like playful and kind really? of Sandlot style. <laughs> <clears throat> driver wild. was new yeah that's so funny and yeah. i can totally see that too like um and i feel like i i'm more of like laughing like just serious like we don't joke here right now it's not the time to joke <laughs> We're <trying> to get out <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> yeah. but you need that balance on a team though totally and i mean go looking back i wish i was not so serious like why the heck was i so like tight and tense and like oh gosh just I think maybe I could you know could have gone to a whole nother level if I just would like relax sometimes but I don't know I just felt like just so tight tense like just this is serious business like just <laughs> like, we've got to get out and we've got to get hits and, you know it's just, it's just, like it's just ridiculous like looking back like I just wish have a little bit more I, but I had fun to, like playing mm-hmm. like that but I wish I had that approach of like just that trash talk like just being silly goofy and but yeah I don't know, maybe but did you even know that about yourself as you were you know like playing like you don't know it you know no no looking back I'm like I was just so like tight and tense and just god <laughs> we must win yeah I know. Yeah. But I also feel like I feel like I'm pretty silly goofy, so mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah, it's interesting just the the clashing of, of those two. Yeah. Um because I I think um when like confronted with that, people wouldn't they wouldn't uh think I was taking things seriously. And I was, but yeah. I just had a, a, a more lax attitude about it and that just like wasn't wasn't me Mm -hmm. and when I tried to be that Mm -hmm. it didn't work out for me totally it took like the love and the joy the flow out of the game when I was like trying to be like this is yeah right what I gotta do and I right like it just and that's what happened to me like in college I didn't um 
I got more fixated on numbers mm-hmm. and trying to be somebody I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as a result, I fell short of, of my expectations. Mm -hmm. And so like you get in that cycle, you know? Yeah. It's a tough thing. And, but all through that period, that's what everyone's doing, right? Everyone's trying to figure out who they are in this space or who they're trying to be. I mean, it's like you look to the people around you to, to try to help you, but You gotta figure more that out. Yeah. Like you figured these things out, right? Like for you as well. Like you didn't know going through it during the time that you were fixated on numbers, or is that something that you figured like at the end, like, okay, wow, like I was really thinking about that. Like, yeah, you know, it was at the end when I was getting like snappy and kind of bitchy. And that's not, you know, that's not a good space to be in when like people are trying to help you and you're like, I know. (laughs) (laughs) I already knew that. (laughs) Just trying to help you, Chaz. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'm just getting in my own damn way. I I hear you. And uh, gosh, like sometimes, yeah. Like if we could just have an elevated look at ourselves sometimes and sometimes I feel like if I had an elevated look at myself like I would just crack up and laugh like really Tosh like come on mm-hmm. but to be able to open up and you know hear the people that are actually trying to help you like gosh like how fast we could get to that next or close that gap and get to that next level you know mm-hmm. if we you know, just opened up or just you know yeah, Open but but I was like a person that just like held it all in. Like, no, this isn't affecting me. Like, right. I'm, I'm tough. I'm cool. I'm mm-hmm. tough. Yeah. I don't cry. Yeah. I don't, you know. Uh, but I was like, you know, I was really like a little bubble, just like boop, you just like <laughs> poke in a little bit, and the whole thing's gonna go. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So fun. So fun. I, you know, even I wouldn't change anything though, even right. though like we're talking about like the past and kind of what we've been through and the people we were, I wouldn't have changed anything. You have to go through those things. Run hundred percent. Like you totally evolve, you change. Um, same. I wouldn't change anything either. Like I think just in my adult life, like my adult life, but <laughs> my adult <laughs> life, <laughs> I'm just so wise. And, you know. <laughs> But definitely, like, it is reflecting, like, this is a real Oprah here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, I think you won the Oprah Award. That's going to be a new award. It's going to be a new award. In my adult life. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Join Tosh on Super Soul Sunday. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. My dream. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I wouldn't change it. <laughs> I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, I just, I don't know. I, I think of a large part of who I am today is, like, going through those experiences and, I don't know, like, again, thankful. Thankful yeah. to have had the opportunity to compete and, I mean, play for Coach Enquist. I think that was a huge part of just shaping and molding the person who I am today. You know? Yeah. What do you think of Coach Enquist? It, she's, she embodies so much. Um, what are some of the, the traits or characteristics that you try to, to take with you? from her or yeah Mm -hmm. you know because we had that early conversation about like yeah you know I want a little bit of that oh yeah a little bit of that her savviness um she's just so savvy like she's well educated on like so many different topics and so many different subjects and she's just so I don't know like she's just brilliant she's super smart um I love her confidence I think that's the thing that I've gravitated the most and I think that's what I loved playing 
for her, the, the thing that she brought out me is, you know, finding your confidence. And um, she made me believe that I could freaking walk on water. You know, I felt like I could run through brick walls playing for her. Um, but like, I think more now, I definitely appreciate her more now than when I played for her. Like, I have moments where I hated her when I played for her. Um, but definitely now she's like a guidepost for me. Like I literally tell her like any big life experience, it's like my mom, my dad and coach and she's still in my life. And it's what we're 15 years later and I'm still, I don't know, 15, 16 years later and I'm still reaching out to her and asking her for like life help and you know, how to, you know, business decisions and she's still there and so I, I don't know I just appreciate um so much that she's given me she's literally like my life mentor um and I feel so freaking lucky like um I could literally you know she just will like pick up the you know she called me the other day and was like hey I just wanted to hear your voice what's going on <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like really yeah and it's cute it and like she's her. serious and she's like <clears throat> and it's literally like we talked for like 10 minutes and just a little catch up and she's like I just thought about you and um you know she's been surfing and I don't know she's just great she's yeah she's my everything I I love that woman yeah she's super supportive I mean sometimes she'll just like call me randomly yeah Yeah. (laughs) and then at convention I'll always run into her and then it's you know a long conversation yes Mm. she's like passionate and like but she cares like she mm. truly truly cares and I think that's the thing too it's not like fluff it's not fake I mean you know because she's so intelligent and her mind like works in like 10 trillion ways sometimes you're like trying to keep up with her but um and but but she genuinely like cares about like our well-being and you know our transformations that we're making um she definitely like loves challenge people and she's still challenging me to this day. And I'm like, dude, like, I don't necessarily want the challenge, you know, but, (laughs) um, you know, but I, I definitely appreciate it though. Mm -hmm. So since you, you wrapped up playing softball, how has it, how has like your journey and kind of discovering your place in the softball space been? It's been fun. I mean, for the most part, I mean, I, I would say like, there's a challenge of, um, uh, I guess there's a, a, a bit of a challenge when, um, you know, like, I talked about earlier, like how much, you know, I know that I want to explore more things in this world. Like how much do I want to stay in softball? You know, like, I know that's not, not my end all be all, you know, but it is a huge part of me making a living and, um, you know, all those things. So it's your expertise. It's my expertise. And it's the thing I can talk about with my eyes closed. And it's the thing that I'm obviously the most comfortable talking about, but I don't want to get like, there's a part of me that doesn't want to get stuck in this area of just being super comfortable talking about things that are really, really easy, you know, Mm -hmm. doing the Ted talk and talking to a broader audience. Like that's what's challenging me. And like, that's one of the things that I said to myself when they retired was like, I want to be challenged in different ways. And, you know, I want to, I'm a person of integrity. So I want to like find those things that do challenge me. Um, But then again, like, I want to leave an imprint in the game and still give value and still um, push the game forward because it's given us such a huge platform. It's given us so much. And I feel like I'm just like, I'm forever indebted to the game to continue to uh, pay it forward. And I don't know, like, so just the journey is, it's been like a, a, this internal battle, like, I want to be in it. I want to give, 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 but I want to challenge myself. And mm-hmm. so challenging myself means like broader, bigger, um, not just staying in this, this lane of softball, but mm-hmm. um, I guess it's like finding that balance of, um, you know, I, I, I guess what I'm saying, I, I, I I'm kind of all, all over the place, but I guess I'm now finding that there is great balance of still 
challenging myself and I still can leave that imprint and I still can stay in the game and you know we can do it in so many different ways now mm-hmm. we can do it um with thanks to social media we can still give value and give tips and I've got my talk yeah. tips and you know yeah and, yeah like it's been like how can I be creative how can I you know not necessarily like just go back into coaching because I'm not sure I'm passionate about that um coaching collegiately or whatnot but um just being creative um Mm -hmm. figuring out ways to just stay in the game and still um, be a part of it that's cool i think it's a beautiful thing it's not all over the place yeah you have developed an expertise in softball and uh you had a long like crazy beautiful career and then that ended and now you have to allow space for the new thing to grow. Right. And that is like an uncomfortable period of time, you know, because like how we are, it's like, you know, here's my goal. I'm going mm-hmm. <laughs> to do X, Y, and Z right. to reach that goal. And right. it's like actually a space where you have to be with yourself you know, continuously ask yourself questions, Mm -hmm. continuously kind of um, follow the things you're curious about. Mm -hmm. And um, you may not know where it leads and that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think all of those things are like so important because I'm, I'm kind of like that way. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm kind of like a cross pollinator, cross pollinator in the sense Mm -hmm. of like, I've got this expertise in softball but it's like I like all these different things and I see the parallels and the similarities between all the things and you know I mix this thing with this thing Mm -hmm. and like see what happens and I think there's uh that space is um an important time and it's Mm -hmm. like you can't really rush through it it has its own pace to it like (laughs) right right (laughs) And that's the thing too, exactly what you said. It's like, we're so used to like having this thing that we're like working towards immediately. Like, so I think that's been like the struggle. And I mean, I'm on year four since retiring and I feel like I should be, but I, you know, I feel like I've been doing things, but um, like that next big thing that like is it. And I don't know if we ever really come to it. And I guess been giving myself grace but sometimes I'm like okay like I'm year four out like I should be in like the next thing but I guess I'm in the next thing I don't know it's Mm -hmm. just all of Mm -hmm. these crazy thoughts Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah no I have them all the time yeah I know (laughs) well this is great like this is actually like therapy I'm like um you feel it too you know but yeah yeah. you know we all go uh we all go through endings Mm -hmm. and um most of the time we don't acknowledge them we just kind of like go about our lives and I think sometimes as we get older especially when right you had this like long commitment to to softball and it's like just imagine a, a marriage ending and it's like having to you still love the person (laughs) You have all this history with it. You you know, like, it's so comfortable. Yes. (laughs) You know me. (laughs) Yes. And I like this. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. (laughs) Right. And that, that, I mean, that's it. But it's, it, that's so true, Tess. Like, that's (laughs) that's it. Like, it really is. And it's like, okay, like, I really want to, like, spread my wings. But then there's a whole other thing whole other things with like spreading my wings and then like those are like the you know like can I go into a whole nother space like you know like am I enough am I good enough do I know enough am I smart enough you can Mm -hmm. right and it's like it's and then it's just that battle but then it's like okay well you know I guess figuring out that lane and then being able to take those like small baby steps and incremental steps and doing those little small things but I guess the hard part is the space in between of finding the other yeah. lane mm-hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. So that's where I'm at. I mean, I'm, I, but I'm, I'm, I am doing so much. They're all like softball related, but all different random lanes, you know? So. Um, yeah. I've watched, uh, I think your game changer videos are really well yeah. done. I think they're awesome. Well, thanks. thanks. And, thanks. you know, anyone who gets to watch those is like lucky to be able to kind of, I mean, I just think about this t- day and age, like who were you watching? We didn't get to watch anybody. And like no. now that players can basically pick up their phones and watch any professional do a workout, hit, field, throw, like so many examples and vi- visible representation of <clears throat> people just like them. Yeah, it's insane. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, just lately I've been talking to a lot of kids on Zoom and like, I'm like, you guys, I know you guys hear that social media is like the distraction and all these things. But I'm like, you guys are living in like one of the best times because of the access that you get to so much information. And um, being able to like, I don't know, put themselves out there like as athletes, you know, like um, there's this young girl, I can't think of her handle, but she's always, I I follow her, she's super cute. And Mm -hmm. she's posting daily her workouts. And I'm like, you guys have this platform where you can showcase literally your talents and, show who you are and we talk about this recruiting age and um college coaches like you literally can like showcase your progress on social media and you can showcase the type of person you are you can showcase your work ethic like i i think social media is a beautiful thing when it's used in that way you know Mm -hmm. um obviously there are so many distractions of you know just things that you're feeding yourselves and all those things but i when I'm talking to them, I'm like, use this to your advantage and like, don't just scroll, you know, put mm-hmm. some good stuff out there and showcase you, you know, uh, could you imagine having social media when we were growing up? It's crazy. Yeah. And the I'd access to information. Probably too. get in trouble. One- <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> I know, same, but just the access to information. So I don't yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to evolve with like, the fact, because at first I'm like, social media, it's stupid, it sucks, it's dumb, it's this, it's that, it's distracting, it's, it is, it's time waster, it's all these things, but like, let's, it's here, so. <laughs> yeah, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not going anywhere, and let's mm-hmm. use it in a positive way, so there you go, yeah. Okay, um, another softball question. You lied to me. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who is the toughest pitcher that you've faced? Ooh. I Why? have a couple. Okay, you can go with a couple. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Cat was tough. Um, I hated facing, I hated, in college, I actually, I hated facing Jenny Finch. Um, pure competitor. Um, she just was going to like out compete you and mm-hmm. hated facing her. Yeah. Um, she struck me out. Yeah. She's just like a straight up competitor, you know, and she could bring it. Yeah. And I can't even she, see it. Huh? Can't even see it. <laughs> you didn't see it. Yeah. She's got, she breaks all blames. Like she's got everything. She's got mm-hmm. a great change up. She knows everything. Um, and of course, Yukiko Ueno from the Japanese national team. Like, she's probably like my ultimate pitcher that it's hard to face because every time you face her, she's completely different. Um, I think she's half robot. And I can see that. <laughs> she's <laughs> insane. <laughs> she's insane. I mean, I, I feel like one game I faced her, she only threw me change ups. Next game I faced her, she only throws me like rise balls. And then every single time you face her, she's completely different. And I have never faced a pitcher that's been like that. Like, it's incredible. Um, it's, it's incredible. She's, she's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, Speaking of Japan, are there certain things that you've taken from Japan 
that uh, either a physical thing or a habitual thing that you now do when you come home? Um, I would say like food. I always bring <laughs> like... <laughs> I love their salad dressing. I love their miso. I always bring those things home. I'm like always making miso soup, um, food. Um, that's probably not the answer you're looking for, but <laughs> food. It's okay. <laughs> food, food, yeah. Food. Um, but I don't know, like Japanese culture, man, like there's nothing like it. I mean, I never thought in a million years that I would play there, be there, fall in love with their culture. I think one of the things I appreciate the most is just like attention to detail and like a little bit of respect for the people around you, um, respect for strangers, respect for elders. Like they're just such a like um, culture that respects Mm -hmm. living things around them. And um, I think that's something that I don't ever think I was very aware or keen to things like just saying hello, good morning to someone you're passing on the street, um, opening a door for somebody, like those kind, simple things that, I don't know, you think are just super simple, but mm-hmm. I mean, they just take these things to a whole nother level. Um, uh, like, it, which, which is funny, like if our team is working out or doing something and like there's just a uh, stranger, you know, doing a jog or running by, our whole team will stop and they'll stop and they'll say, Ohio Zionists will say good morning to the person or good afternoon. They always acknowledge and they see, they see everybody, they, they see people. And it's not just um, ignoring the person walking past you. I think mm-hmm. that's one of the things that I've learned. How's your, how's your Japanese? It's okay. What are, what are the phrases that you must know? If you go to Japan. Well, as a coach, my vocabulary has changed from a okay. player. Um, as a coach, it's like, see the ball deep. Yobi Konde. <laughs> like, let the ball travel. See the ball deep. Um, my, like, means out in front. Like, hit the ball out in front. Like, you know, those are the phrases that I've learned um, more as a coach. Mm-hmm. As a player... Uh, it's more of the bad words and like crazy phrases, you know, that don't need to be repeated, but um, mm-hmm. they like love to tease you about, well, they would never tease you, Chez, but they like to tease me because I'm, tease me because I'm bigger. <laughs> they like to tease me about like your weight. Like they're just yeah. like kind of weird and like direct and like, oh, you look fat today, Tosh. Like, it's like, <laughs> like, not funny here in America. Like, <laughs> it's not that for that, but them they're just like you look like you gained weight since the last time we, we saw you just keeping it real you know and so <laughs> most of the things that are funny mm-hmm. to them then it's like okay I can go with it but they're mm-hmm. super cute um I just my team my Toyota team like I just like I'm obsessed I like love them mm-hmm. just, how many months out of the year do you spend there um the season's like six months six months Mm -hmm. out of the year but now as a coach I like break it up so I only go in like three week chunks so it's only for about 150 days a Mm -hmm. year total Mm -hmm. well if you ever need an assistant you just like I know let me know weren't you supposed to come you're supposed to come and visit I know that was uh, I couldn't go I was poor back then come on (laughs) seriously like um it's one of my favorite places I think Mm -hmm. you love it you yeah, I think I'd love it too for yeah. like so many reasons. Yes. Like I I know I'm not alone in this, but I just like have had such an itch of late to go exploring. Yeah, same. And I think the times is making it that way cuz like literally like 2 months before this thing was happening, I'm like I'm tired of traveling. I hate mm-hmm. it. Oh my yeah. god. And mm-hmm. I'm like I need an airport. <laughs> why are we so why are people so weird we always want what we can't have there you yeah go. i know well distance makes the heart grow fonder totally, totally. <laughs> totally. uh well uh during quarantine have uh you been netflixing 
Uh, what have you been binge watching lately? Yeah, I've been Netflixing like nobody's business. I've watched <laughs> everything. I've seen Tiger King, Ozarks, um, Money Heist. Money Heist? Mm -hmm. and it's a uh, porn one, right? Yeah, it's in subtitles. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Is it good, though? <laughs> it's really good, though. It's pretty good. What language? Spanish. They're speaking Spanish. It takes place in Spain. Um, mm -hmm. um, what else? I can't even. I saw the Becoming um, Michelle Obama. Oh, with Michelle Obama. Was it good? Was, yeah, it was pretty good. Good inspo. Huh? I said yes. good inspo. Great inspo. I'm like, I miss the Obamas. Um, they're just so cute and inspiring. Um, mm -hmm. I've been watching everything. I can't, uh, nothing's coming to me. Um, I've been working out, doing the little Peloton app, doing that. Okay. Um, nice. I've been doing all the things in the pool. The pool's been like the yeah. highlight. I mean, that's where you gotta be. That's where I'd be. Uh, yeah. Um, it's just kind of taken, uh, taken over everything. I'm jelly. Yeah. Well, yeah. our time is up. Yeah. This that went by great. fast. I know. Can mm -hmm. we do this like every week? Okay. Just check in. <laughs> I know. I was talking with Danielle. She's like, feel free to, to host fake podcasts with me. <laughs> Seriously. It's so fun. Like just chatting. Like nobody has to listen. Like we just talk. <laughs> <laughs> so oh man. Um, so for people who are watching or listening, uh, who want to follow you and what you're doing, where should they go? Instagram would be the best, uh, best place, Natasha Watley 29, um, or Twitter, or um, Facebook. Okay. All of the places. There you go. Awesome. Tosh, I miss you. I miss you too. You're so <laughs> awesome. Ed. This is awesome. I'm proud of you for doing this. And it's oh, just thank you. fun to listen to these. So keep it up. You're welcome. I appreciate the love. <laughs>